Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Purpose University podcast, your source of inspiration as you seek to create your best life and be your most authentic self. I am your host, Dr. Eve, and I am so glad that you have decided to join me at this time. If this is your first time tuning in, I want to say thank you for checking out the show, and I certainly hope you'll come back for more. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I am so excited today, folks. I have the opportunity to sit down and chat with Hector Sanchez Leon, who is a new friend that I've met first gen and has been pretty damn awesome. Hector, hi. Hey there, what's up? How are you? Doing great, Dr. E, how are you? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. How's the weather down there in Florida? Here in Miami, it's always hot. make it hot because that's oh. all yes oh always hot you make it hot okay i'm with it well i want to definitely say thank you again for taking the time out to come on today's show i've been really excited about connecting with you especially saying that you are land of theta phi okay greeks in the house there we go and listen let me tell you something dr e when i found out that you were delta i knew this was going to be a hit from the beginning <laughs> a lot of respect I remember back in my uh, my college days, you know, you girls, you ladies just run anything that you do, you run it, you run the yard, you run whatever you do. So <laughs> I'm sure that this is just another example. So uh, I'm so flattered. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so Delta's out there. You should have married a Delta. You still have time. Listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> that we're, there's plenty of us out there in the world <laughs> but look, I want to say thanks again for coming on the show I know I know I said just a couple of things about you but I really like for you to tell your story so if you don't mind let's just go ahead and, and just kick it off tell us who you are what is it that you do like anything the world needs to know about Hector Sanchez Leon I really love your name it's awesome thank you thank mm-hmm. you listen uh, first and foremost um, I'm a man right um, I'm real I'm a guy that that has definitely had ups and downs throughout different stages of life, but I'm here. Something that I love is my story. So to give you a very, very quick summary, I'm an immigrant myself and a child of immigrants. Mm. Uh, My family's from Mexico City. Grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. So ATL, that's my hometown. And throughout life, basically learned uh, how to adapt not only language, culture, and you know different changes that come with life. And well, from there came college, UGA graduate. I uh, love my Georgia Bulldogs. Love my my Georgia family. Definitely has that Southern charm and hospitality that we're known for. And it played a big role in becoming who I am now. And I carry some of those values even today. I'm a father. I have a beautiful, beautiful daughter, seven-year-old daughter, Sophia, who um, I always say she teaches me more than I will ever teach her. Mm. Has no idea. Hopefully one day she knows that. Uh, I have a a beautiful, beautiful girlfriend. Her name is Jessica. I love you, babe. If you're listening to this, I love you. And uh, another wise woman that has been a part of my life. So that's me in a nutshell. I enjoy music. I relate a lot of my life back to music, even in business. I use some of the percussion lessons in, in my business. And um, that has brought me here to Miami now, where I work uh, as a sales executive for ADP. And, um, you know, truly really just loving life now. That's really awesome. Who's your favorite artist since you love music? Hip hop, oh, pop. Yeah, who, who you like? Who you like? Okay. Uh, funny story. One of the first songs that I ever heard in English was when I came to the States at age 12. Um, two songs. Number one, Outcast has to definitely be mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> It was fresh and so clean. That one oh, was very hurt. cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then the other one, of course, of course, Jay-Z. You know, not only his lyrics, but, um, you know, the movement that he has created, the mentality that he has, and being able to overcome, you know, the, the status quo and, and become something completely different has, uh, has impacted me as well. Mm, that is really dope. So you're a big fan of hip hop? That's it. Hip hop. Old school hip hop. Old school hip hop, but yeah, because this new stuff is trash. But that's my thing. <laughs> oh, good. So I'm just curious, being that you came here as an immigrant, and that's just really powerful when you were 12. How did you even learn about college, and what was it that provoked you to want to go? A few things just fell in place. Um, I remember hearing and listening to my friends talk about college and applications and not having any clue what that meant or any clue what that was. But thankfully, a lot of people are placed in your life 
uh, by Destiny, by God, and Sergeant Nelson, my my instructor back in ROTC, and, and as well as other professors just shaped me. And they gave me the idea that not only that's a possibility for me, but I could actually do it. Mm. So I definitely want to give props to uh, Sergeant Nelson. He's the one that sat me down one day, saw my strength, saw my, my, you know, also saw my struggle that I was going through at that time. And I'm pretty sure that he's the one that sat me down and said, hey, what are we doing? Are you going to college? Are you going into the army? Like, what, what options do you have? And he opened up my mind to, to see what was in front of me. Um, and thankfully, I, I was able to go through it. So, yeah. That's really dope. So you went to UGA. UGA. That's real dope, though. Like, we love UGA of all places to go. Like, I'm like, yeah, that's real dope. I had a friend to go to UGA as well. What yeah. made you choose that institution? Um, because it's a really big school and it's like very well known and it seems like it could be very intimidating. Um, so, what was it? I think it, that exactly what you just mentioned. It was intimidating, it was a challenge. Hmm. Uh, I had a few options. I could have stayed more local, you know, the schools closer to my house, closer to my family. UGA just stood out and I, I like the fact that it was far enough from home yet still in Georgia that I felt that I was going away mm-hmm. but return home if necessary and um, I think I visited campus one day and I just fell in love with Athens and fell in love with the culture and the red and black the bulldog is a very strong figure so um, yeah all of that I think the branding and, and the fact that it was so close to home uh, but yet yeah, again you know far enough to feel like I was independent Mm, absolutely and so what was it like for you leaving your family because i know that had to be something that was a really big deal to say i'm going to school i'm going away um but then to have those obligations to help take care of your family yeah it was it was tough it was a learning experience i remember my grandma asking me um hector are you ready like do you do you feel like you know what you're doing are you ready to go and i told her yeah of course i'm ready and i had no clue i had no clue what i was doing so it was tough just uh again readjusting so that's been a trend in, in my life at that mm. adjusting I went and, and grew up in an urban neighborhood uh, urban high school mm. where you know that's all I knew that's that's what I was fed that's how I grew up and going to Georgia UGA I learned something completely different mm. um, I still remained the urban kid and you could see that with my attire you could see that with the, the way that I talked so it was another shock for me to have to adapt to let's say more mainstream world where you know things are not the same so yeah that was definitely part of the experience there that's really interesting that's really cool so you went to uga and so you've been culture shocked at least two or three times now coming to america moving to an urban neighborhood going to urban school now you go to uga and you graduate Exactly, exactly. What happened right after graduation? After you got this degree, the world is yours, your first gen, what happens next? Was it all peaches and cream? So I have to use what you just said, actually. You mentioned coming to America. Reminds me of the movie, Coming to America. (laughs) That's a good movie. That's a good movie. One of my favorite movies, by the way. So when he comes and he's culture shocked and he thinks that he's the king and what he still wants to adapt after college, that's exactly what happened to me. Uh, The way that I describe it is, you know, I thought I was a king because I, I, you know, in college you become popular or you have your friends, you have through the fraternity, through Lambda Theta Phi, you make a lot of great connections. The way that, that I describe it is that you're inside a bubble, right? When you graduate, that bubble pops and you enter real life. You're no longer secured by your semester that starts and ends at a specific time. Classes, friends around you, uh, cheap living, because usually around campus things are very cheap. Now you actually have to work and provide for yourself. So it was a big culture shock and reality check for me, uh, just realizing how uh, life happens fast. Uh, Around that same time, that's when I had my daughter and that changed the game completely for me. So not only did it change my life, it also added a lot more responsibility. Um, That led me to pursue e-commerce. I launched a website back in those days. Um, I love marketing. That was my major at UGA. So I explored different options uh, in the entertainment field, uh, online. And honestly, I was just so hungry. And, and so eager to do something out of nothing. Uh, you know, I, I kept trying and trying to either connect with friends or, or start something that would work. I always saw myself as a businessman. I just didn't know what that felt 
like or, or what that you know really meant at that time so yeah the the college bubble was popped and and real life started happening and you realize that you don't know exactly what you don't know there are so many things that have to be learned and hopefully you know that's why i'm so thankful for this opportunity i i look forward to having people listen to this and take something from it. Prepare, reach out to your network, increase your network, uh, look for mentors. Always try to be the, the least knowledgeable person in any room. Because when you think about it, if you're the least knowledgeable, there's something to learn from anyone and everyone around you. So yeah, that, that definitely happened to me after college. A lot of ups and downs, not only uh, financially, personally, you know, relationships, and life just happened and it happened too fast mm, it happened too fast i guess you don't even think about it because four years it's like a couple hours seems like as an adult like it's like what happened mm -hmm. i can definitely agree with that so here's my other thing you said that there are a lot of ups and downs tell us about a time that you faced adversity like what was it and how did you overcome it um adversity has been a common theme um Maybe you can relate as a first gen. If there's any immigrant kids out there, you can relate. We have not only dual culture, we want to adapt to the culture around us, our friends, but we also have our family, we have our culture there. Uh, but there are other reality factors that play in. Many immigrant kids uh, don't know and, and, and don't really have an idea that after college, if they're fortunate enough to go to college, you may not have the option for, for a job because of specific immigration uh, statuses that you may have. Mm. And I gotta be very, very blunt with you. That was one of the main challenges that I always knew was coming. But again, I didn't really know what it felt like until I graduated college. Here I am mm. happy, just like the rest of my peers and the world is mine and I'm gonna take it. But guess what, Hector? No, nope, you can't have a job yet because the permit that you have right now does not allow that. Mm. Um, yes, Hector, you're definitely great and you have all the skills and you can interview and you can definitely go through the entire process, but unfortunately right now, cannot join that company. So that was definitely one of the biggest uh, challenges and you know adversity that I faced. Um, thank God many things have changed ever since and, and all of that has been completely fixed. But in between, that in between time of not knowing what was going to happen, still being hungry, being eager for success and seeing other people have jobs that, that they went to school for and you not be able to have that, you know, created a lot of challenges. That's what led me to launch my online business. Um, I, I used to work as a janitor overnight. I used to do anything just to provide for, for my family at the time. Once again, that in between time was the toughest. Uh, looking back, it all had to happen uh, to get me to where I am today. And yeah, so that's a very, very personal thing about my story that, that I, I definitely wanted to share with you. That is moving. That is so moving because we are first gen. But then to add the, the immigrant aspect to it something that I've never lived and can't even imagine that you just were forfeited the opportunities to work because of your status, but you had everything you needed. And it was like, here in America, we were supposed to be so free, you were still kind of being rejected. And that is something that is like, wow, um, even I think that I take for granted. So thank you for sharing that because that's really humbling to me. Um, very, uh, no, very powerful, thank you. If there's anyone out there, you know, who maybe has something similar, uh, or we all have our struggles, you know, I have mine. That, that just happens, happens to be part of my story. I was texting my, my, my girl and there's a quote that she has taught me that the more that I listen to it, the more sense it makes and the more that I understand it. And it is, we are who we are, not despite adversity, but because of it. Mm. So what does that mean? To me, that means that we cannot ignore the adversity. We cannot pretend that it didn't happen. In my case, I can't now sit down and, and say, hey, everything's beautiful. Miami has treated me well. My job, I love it. Everything's going amazing. And my past never happened. Instead of trying to pretend it didn't happen, try to embrace the lessons and the good change that, that comes because of it. 
Mm. And to be honest, doctor, like I'm still going through some adjusting, right? Uh, sometimes I can't believe that life is the way it is now because I always found a wall, I always found a barrier in front of me that now when something good happens to me, sometimes it's hard to believe like, wait, is this supposed to happen? Um, mm. Am I supposed to meet this person and, and, and this door is supposed to open or hey, something is, is off here. So um, it's been definitely a learning experience to learn to accept reality. Mm learn to accept reality but is reality is it what we make it or is it sometimes giving it to us and we just have to make the best of it you're asking me yeah so let's think of it this way so reality is is what we make it for sure but reality is still there so uh when you plant a tree if you're a farmer or you like gardening and and you want to plant a tree you know what you have to do you get the seed you put it in the ground put soil over it and maybe you water it over time right so that's the reality that we that we ourselves make we are obedient with what we have to do in this case i just have to remain loyal to my responsibility what is it that i have to do that's my reality but at the end of the day i don't make that seed grow I don't know how it grows. I don't know what happens inside the, the soil and, and what has to happen in order for that to really turn into a tree. Hmm. So I think it's that dual mentality that as long as we remain obedient, remain doing what we are supposed to do, the purpose that we have, we do create our own reality. But at the end of the day, there are some, some things that we cannot control and we have to accept that as well. Hmm. Ooh, you're a heavy hitter. <laughs> you are really a heavy hitter, and I really love it. Let's go, doctor. Let's go. Let's do this. Look, you're doing it like for real, because I'm like, man, when is your book coming out again? <laughs> like, I'm like, really, seriously, like, I'm going to hold you to that. You need to write a book because your story has to be documented. You have to leave that on this earth. Um, that Because you just got a lot to say that people really need to hear. Because I'm over here like, man. Oh, look, okay. But look back, look back to the questions, though. Yeah. Um, so outside of, you know, the quote that your girlfriend shared with you, hey, Jess, what would you say is the best advice you've ever gotten from someone like a mentor or, you know, an elder? What would you say that was? Yeah, um, man, you know, um, I don't know exactly the phrase or, or his words or um, can't remember the exact conversation. I just remember the feeling that he has always given me. Uh, taking it back to Sergeant Nelson back in high school, you know, the best advice that he that he gave me that turned into, you know, something permanent in my life is he believed in me. Hmm. He simply saw me and he truly believed in me. Did he see me as a young kid in high school, not knowing what he was doing and, and pretending to be someone he wasn't? Absolutely. He probably saw all of that, but he still believed in me. So it may not be necessarily a phrase or a piece of advice that he gave me, but the lesson is, yeah, believe in yourself, believe in who you are. We all have heard that before. We probably say it to other people, but what about if we, if we do the same thing for another person? You see a child out there that's misbehaving. Um, you see one of your people at work. You know, I, I'm fortunate to manage uh, a sales team and I always tell them, listen, I'm, I'm your biggest supporter. I believe in you and I, I see the strengths inside of you. Um, so the advice is believe in yourself and believe in others. Do what, what, what has been done to you, do it to others as well. But with that true intention inside your heart. Mm, I like that. Just curious to know if you were talking to your 12 year old self who just got into america wow. what would you say to your younger self about living your best life wow so that's that's actually you hit me with that question because that's um man like i, I do picture myself there oh. um man that's that's a good one like hector you know just look at me first of all look at me you already are at age 12 who you will be and who you want to be the biggest dream that you may have inside of you you already are that exactly and more what you're facing now is going away just keep in mind that inside of you everything that you need in order to become that person that man that you have in mind that you have no idea how to even overcome you know the day-to-day -day struggles 
just know that you already are that person inside. Be patient, but you already are that man. Yeah, man, that was that was a good question, doctor. Mm. Got right me. answer. Look, I'm hoping that you're gonna go back and listen to yourself so that you be like, I said that because you said that. <laughs> you really did. Um, it's nice to be able to 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 go back and and just again think and, and relive because there will be twelve year old immigrants who will be coming here as you did, and those will be the people who will eventually need to hear what you just said in some kind of way. You know, mm. uh, real dope. So kind of, you know, as we're getting to a point of, of wrapping up, I'm interested in knowing what's next for you. Yeah. So currently I'm, I'm truly enjoying my, uh, my role at my company. I'm a sales executive. I manage nine, you know, talented individuals and they drive me, you know, to more success every day. So that's definitely in the future for me just to continue growing professionally. I do look forward to also doing more things like this. You know, I, I have found a passion for talking to others, talking to people, uh, seeing their potential and, and helping them, you know, develop a process that they can use themselves for, um, you know, for their own good. So I picture myself, I don't know, talking to kids, being a mentor to a lot more kids and, and young people that, that may need help. Uh, on the personal level, I, I look forward to uh, continue watching my daughter grow into a beautiful lady that she already is, uh, growing my family and, and uh, you know, just truly fulfill uh, my purpose, not only as a professional, but on the personal level. I want to raise a family. I I want to inspire my own kids and, and in a way leave that legacy of Man, like my dad, my dad went through that and look at us now, like, you know, we are the way that we are because of him, but now they have their own story to tell. And yeah, you know, just, just giving back, giving back what has been given to me. Uh, um, nothing happens just by itself. And I think one of the biggest things that I've learned is, um, I've tried doing things on my own and have I done some things on my own? Absolutely. You know, you can work hard and you can accomplish what you want, but at the end of the day, be thankful for those around you. Be thankful for the opportunities that, that are presented. And, and there's always someone watching. There's always, mm-hmm. always someone listening. And, and someone saw something in me, gave me the opportunity to work at this company. And, and they knew that I was going to grow and it happened. So I want to make sure that I remain humble to continue doing that, but also allow that for other people and open the doors for other people to succeed. And whether it is professionally, financially, you know, personally, I want to make sure that um, I do my part. Mm, that. Absolutely. And I'm sure that all of those things will come to you. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Because like you said, you it's already inside of you. So you just got to go get it. It'll make it happen. And so if there was one special message that you could leave with listeners, something for them to chew on for the rest of their life, what would that be? So let's take it back to the idea of... Um, Use your strengths to your advantage. Whoever is listening, whoever will listen to this, um, you already have strengths. You have something that you're passionate about, whether it is music, uh, networking, you're great at talking to people, you're great at reading, whatever the case is, use your strengths to your advantage. Um, how many times have we heard this, you know, as kids, or if we have kids, you, know, you tell your kids, hey, if you don't like vegetables, eat your vegetables. If you're not good at uh, soccer, hey, you gotta go to more soccer practices. Uh, you, you're not playing piano very well. You actually have to sit more hours in front of the piano and, and learn. All of that is great. It creates discipline. It creates structure for our kids. But I think as adults, we continue continue doing the same thing to ourselves. Instead of focusing on the strengths, we try to focus on the weaknesses. And you have this flaw. You have that flaw. Hey, you got to work on that. Fix it. No, let's actually use our strengths. Focus on your strengths at work. What are you really good at? Where do you shine? Shine even more in that area. Are you great at leading people? Hey, step up and lead yourself first, but lead others. Whatever your passion is, whatever your strength is, use that to your advantage. And I promise you that you'll find more joy out of life. You'll find more out of yourself. And funny enough, those weaknesses will start going away because of your strengths. I absolutely love that. Where on the internet, in the social sphere, can we find you if we want to connect with you? <laughs> well, right now, I keep it very simple. Uh, Instagram, Hector S. Leon, L-E-O-N. So Hector S. Leon. Um, and soon enough, I'll be relaunching my fraternity and sorority apparel website. Nice. Uh, my Greek life store.com. So you can also find that in the next couple of months. My Greek life store.com. And Hector S. 
Play on. Nice. So we definitely have appreciated your time, your wisdom, your story on today. A very powerful story that I am without a doubt is changing the future of your family in ways that you probably never imagined. So thank you for what you've continued to do and for pushing forward in spite of the adversity that's been presented to you. You have inspired me today and I have enjoyed this. You're so welcome. Well, until the next time, friend, we'll definitely be in touch. Take care of yourself. I will. You too. Blessings. Again, I want to thank you for tuning in. Before you go, just a few things to note. Uh, First and foremost, let's get connected on Instagram and or LinkedIn. You can find me at E-V-E-H-U-D-S-O-N-P-H-D on both social networks. Don't forget to head on over to check out my site at www.evehudsonphd.com. And if you should decide to purchase a book or apparel just for listening to this podcast, you get 10% off of your order. Just use the code podcast when you check out. Last, but certainly not the least, in all that you do, remember to be resilient, authentic, and intentional. I'm out.